You guys made it happen. We love hearing your suggestions and opinions. That's why we brought back the Retired Animatronics series. Thank you for your comments and make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to become part of our notification squad. World of Motion. World of Motion. The World of Motion is enclosed in stainless steel and tells the story of transportation, past, present, and future. World of Motion was an opening day attraction at Epcot and Walt Disney World, and it was a former tenant of the Transportation Pavilion. This attraction was filled with animatronics. World of Motion was the attraction that contained more animatronics of any attraction ever made by Disney. It had over 150 animatronic figures in 22 scenes. Not even Pirates of the Caribbean or the Haunted Mansion have these many animatronics. The attraction focused on the importance of transportation through the different periods of humanity. It began during the Stone Age, where we could see the first method of transportation, foot power. Then we get to see the next method, water transportation, where we could see people traveling by boat. Next we could see animatronics traveling on animals, followed by the invention of the wheel. This took us to the wheel factory and into a part called trade and commerce, where we were shown many useful ways of using the wheel. Next came the ship age, followed by the flight age where we could find Leonardo da Vinci and a man flying in a hot air balloon. We also saw the evolution of steam vehicles, from the Mississippi Riverboat to the steam locomotive. In the next scene, we could find the first traffic jam in the world, followed by lots of scenes of the 1940s and 1950s, until we got to the speed tunnels. These tunnels took us to the center core of the amazing city of the future. After the Omnimover ride was ended, we got out of the vehicles and into the Trans Center, which was full of exhibits and showed about transportation and the things surrounding it, and took an intervention-style feel to all of it. Here we could find the ever-popular show, The Bird and the Robot, which we'll talk about in part six. What happened at this attraction? Well, GM was in a bit of a slump, and World of Motion had lost some popularity. So GM requested that Disney create a new attraction in its place, and wanting to promote their cars, they asked that the new attraction would focus only on cars. On January 12th, 1996, World of Motion closed its doors forever to make way for a whole new attraction focused entirely on cars. They are the elite. Drivers confronting the most punishing conditions. They are the new breed of test driver, mercilessly putting cars through their paces. Who are these masters of the road? Test Track, new at Epcot. See if you've got what it takes. If you want to know more about this ride, click here. Some of the World of Motion figures have been reincarnated as characters in Disneyland's Pirates of the Caribbean attraction, but later removed when they added Jack Sparrow to the ride in 2006. Chicken figures from the attraction's traffic jam scene were featured in Goofy's Barnstormer at Mickey's Toontown Fair in the Magic Kingdom. Other props from the World of Motion, like the Sea Serpent, were at Disney California Adventure in the back corner of Hollywood Pictures' backlot, near the restrooms for the Hyperion Theater. Then sometime between 2004 and 2006, they did some changes and our friend was relocated next to the backlot stage, and just when we thought it had found its final resting place, along came the Electronic Arena in October 2010. And another change of out of props, and it was gone. The last known location of the Sea Serpent was in a warehouse near Disneyland. The weirdest tribute reuse of a World of Motion figure is that one of them was supposedly remade into the Ellen figure for Ellen's Energy Adventure. In 2012, Test Track was refurbished and reopened, and this version of the ride contains many references to World of Motion. We can find many hidden World of Motion logos and a sign on the outside of the track that reads FN2BFRE. An abbreviation of the phrase, fun to be free, the name of the original ride's theme song. Big Al, the Country Bear Jamboree. The Country Bear Jamboree opened at Magic Kingdom in 1971 and Disneyland in 1972. The attraction is a stage show with audio animatronic figures. Most of the characters are bears who perform country music. Guests begin their stay with the bears in the stage lobby, a large room with show photos and a carpeted entrance to the theater. The lobby was lined with oddly shaped doors, each perfectly sized for the different stars of the show. Once guests took their seats in the theater, Master of Ceremonies Henry greeted the audience and invited them to enjoy the jamboree. The show featured a number of different songs performed by the bears and their friends and ended with an ensemble song encouraging the audience to come and visit again. Today, we'll talk about one of the fans' most loved animatronics, Big Al. Big Al is the fattest bear. He is gray with a light gray belly, though his fur was changed to brown in 2012 in the Florida version of the show. 
and wears a tan hat and a red vest. He plays an always out of tune guitar and is voiced by Tex Ritter from his hit album, Blood on the Saddle. Al's act was particularly funny because he didn't follow the show's rhythm at all. When his number started, the curtain opened, and with an out of tune voice and a terrible medley, he started playing his peculiar song. His act lasted for about 50 seconds until he is interrupted by Henry singing the ballad of Davy Crockett. But of course, Big Al couldn't let this happen, and he reappears on the left stage, once again singing Blood on the Saddle. As Henry tells Big Al to stop, Sammy begins to realize the situation is hopeless. He tells Henry that they're going to need help. Henry cues the gang, and all the other bears, except Ernest and Trixie, appear on stage. Together, they sing the show's finale, Ol' Slewfoot. As the cast performs, Big Al, undaunted by their singing, continues to sing Blood on the Saddle. After the song, the stage gets dark, and a crashing noise comes from Big Al's stage. After the finale, Henry tells guests to be sure to come again, as a cast member ushers guests out. Henry, Sammy, Buck, Melvin, and Buff sing one last song, Come Again. The show started becoming less and less popular at Disneyland, and due to this fact, Disney decided to close it and replace it with the many adventures of Winnie the Pooh almost 30 years after it opened. When the ride closed, some of these animatronics were taken to the Walt Disney Archives, others were taken to the Magic Kingdom so their parts could be used as replacements for the animatronics there, and one set of the charming mounted heads remained in Disneyland. We've talked about this before in our abandoned animatronics video. If you want to watch it, be sure to click here. It's been rumored that the Big Al animatronic was recycled and became Oogie Boogie in the Haunted Mansion Holiday. What do you think? Baby Groot Meet and Greet We've talked about many animatronics in the past. Some of them are in rides and attractions, others in queues. But in this case, the animatronic that we're going to talk about was in neither. Back in 2012, it was announced that a new meet and greet would come to Disney's Hollywood Studios. Star-Lord and Baby Groot would come and meet guests to promote their new movie, Guardians of the Galaxy Vol. 2, replacing Moana, who was currently meeting guests in that same spot. Groot was a tiny animatronic and was standing on top of a computer console, ready to plug in a sound system and occasionally talking to Star-Lord. His body moved around and his face was able to make a lot of different expressions that matched the tone of his voice. The animatronic was really charming, and seeing him interact with Star-Lord was amazing. Sadly, it was announced that this meet and greet would end, and the last day for this fun duo was September 29th, 2018. They were replaced by Mike and Sully. But who knows, maybe we'll get to see them again soon, but this time, they'll be meeting guests at Epcot. Hopper, it's tough to be a bug. It's tough to be a bug open in Disney's Animal Kingdom in 1998, followed by a second version in Disney's California Adventure in 2001. This supposedly kid-friendly show features Flick and many other insects. Flick has made us honorary bugs just long enough for him and his pals to show off a few insect survival skills, and a rousing musical number to remind us just how important bugs are in the world. Everything is going great until Hopper arrives. The nine-foot-tall, four-armed grasshopper appears out of nowhere, bursting onto the stage in an explosion of smoke. With his one glassy eye, spindly limbs, and a disturbing snake-like rattle from his sputtering wings, the animatronic scolds the audience for the horrific way humans treat the insect kingdom. He is pretty frightening, but the worst part of the show is when Hopper calls his insect friends to attack guests. They show movie clips from old monster movies that feature giant bugs. They attempt to flatten the audience using a giant fly swatter. Several hornets sting the audience using pneumatic pistons in the seats, and lots of black widow spiders go up and down within inches of guest reach. Thankfully, in the end, a chameleon tries to eat Hopper, and he gets scared, so he retreats. This show closed permanently in California Adventure on March 19, 2018, when a Bugs Land closed to make way for a Marvel-themed land. Thankfully, we can still find it at Disney's Animal Kingdom. RX-24, or Captain Rex, Star Tour. The original Star Tours was advertised as the ultimate Star Wars adventure, where you were supposed to be a space tourist about to visit the Force Moon of Endor via the Star Tours travel agency. The captain of our Star Speeder was the infamous RX-24, or Rex. He is an RX series pilot droid who works for the Star Tours travel company, where he pilots a Star Speeder 3000 spacecraft. Rex is no ordinary pilot. Thanks to his abilities, we got to enjoy a crazy, fun ride through the maintenance room, an asteroid field, a battle against the Empire, and even the destruction of the third Death Star. Rex had three clawed arms, which he used to manipulate starship controls. 
His photoreceptors were blue unless illuminated, which made them shine with white light. The broader sections of his chassis were furnished metal trimmed with gold and purple. Between these were narrower sections in black. Rex clawed fingers, upper anterior facial plating, and vocabulator were also gold. Rex was brought to life by Paul Rubens, who made Rex an important and loved character from Disney parks, thanks to his charismatic and fun personality. On August 14, 2010, Walt Disney World hosted The Last Tour to Endor, event exclusively for Celebration 5 attendees. The event included George Lucas, character appearances, and the Star Tours shutdown ceremony that was a live show with Star Wars characters accumulating in the official power down of the original Disney World Star Tours attraction. The ride was still open after the shutdown ceremony until September 7, 2010, when the attraction held its final flight to Endor, exclusive to D23 members. Star Tours was replaced by Star Tours The Adventure Continues. This new adventure takes us to many different places. It has more than 54 different combinations that take us to different planets on each and every ride so you're unlikely to get the exact same ride twice in one visit. The attraction was also changed to ultra clear 3D. Sadly, we lost Rex's captain in this refurbishment and we can now find C-3PO, but we can still find Rex in the queue. Look in the droid custom section. Here you can find Rex being returned to the manufacturer to correct some defects. And thankfully, this is not the end for Rex. After he was returned to the manufacturer and repaired, Rex crashed in one of his trips and ended up in Batu, where he was reprogrammed into a DJ by Mubo at the Droid Depot, and his appearance was slightly altered. Thereafter, Mubo gave the droid to Ogagara to pay off a debt, and DJ Rex started providing the musical entertainment inside Oga's Cantina. Thank you guys for watching. Special thanks to our Patreons. Check out our Patreon for early releases and exclusive live streams, and now with updated rewards.